Hey guys, today we're going to talk early season lures. Now, for some of you guys, these may be the old standby, you use them every year. But some of you may not have tried these, and if that's the case, I think you want to stick around. We're going to show you why you need to add them to your tackle box for this spring. You know, the other day I was getting ready to do some editing and some stuff on our videos, and I realized it's been four years since Bob and I started doing this. And we started out as just two old guys making videos of our fishing. And I guess going over last year's, I realized just how much the channel has evolved over the last four years and how things are different. Which, you yeah, know, that's fine. I watched some other people and I've seen theirs kind of evolve the same way into different stuff. But I wanted to let you know for this coming year, I want to try to make a conscious effort at something. You're seeing a lot more videos of just me than Bob and I fishing, and there's a reason, which I told Bob, the reason is, I'm not married. You know what, a single guy, he doesn't get invited to anything. No weddings, no anniversary parties, you know, no uh, showers, baby showers, gender reveals, none of that. Guys don't invite guys for that. So I never get invited, so I got a whole lot more time to go fishing than Bob does. I guess I really realized that by looking at all the videos that last year, how many I was doing by myself. So this year, we're going to try to make a conscious effort. If Bob and I are in a video, we're just going fishing. We're going to do what we originally wanted to do. We're going out. We're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to catch some fish. We're going to give each other a bad time. And we're just going to have fun. Now, if I'm out here by myself, then it's just you and me. And if it's just us, i got to have somebody to talk to. Bob's not around. So I'm going to make more of an effort to better explain what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. I'm just not going to sit there and catch fish. I'm going to try to tell you a little more about what I'm actually doing to try to catch those fish. We're going to try that. We'll see if I can stick to it remember to do it. All right, let's get into this real quick. First one, jerkbait. This time of year, it's got to be a jerkbait. And I'll tell you, there's all sizes. You've got the big ones. You've got small ones. Uh, these are a couple that I painted myself with holographic sides on them. The reason I like the holographics is the jerk bait's going to be using as clear of water as possible. And that's what you usually have early in the spring. And it needs that because it's not going to have a lot of vibration. It's not going to have the rattles or the sound to attract the fish as they were in murky waters. So they're going to have to get by a lot with just sight. And what we're doing is we're trying to mimic that dying minnow or that dying bait fish. Have you ever seen, wash your minnows in a bucket and one just kind of laying there and all of a sudden he darts off real quick and then stops? That's what we're trying to do. That's what you're trying to go. So it's a real slow moving, it, it's a jerk, but then it's sitting still. I mean, we're talking water temps in the 30s, 40s, you know, maybe 50. Now, last year, the very first fish I caught of water was on a jerkbait, standing on the bank. Now, here's what I, when I caught him, watch my rod. Now, I'm fishing him a little faster than you might on that particular day. That's what worked. Watch that rod tip. Watch me jerk it a couple times and stop. Then I pick up the slack. Jerk it again, stop, pick up the slack, jerk it again. Like I said, that day might have been a little faster. Some days it may be slower than that. Some days it could actually be faster than that. It's all going to depend on the water temp, and it's going to depend on the fish. But the nice thing with the jerk bait is it works real well in that clear, early season water, temperatures in the 30s and the 40s. And if you're not using a jerk bait, and to be honest with you, three or four years ago, I wasn't, you're missing out. It's a really good early season lure. Now to go with that, one that's a little more popular is a lipless crankbait. For me, lipless crankbait, red, crawl colors, early in the spring, can't beat it. Now this happened to be one that I painted. If you watch my painting videos, that's fine. That's one I painted. But you know what? Long before I started painting, good old cotton cordell, red, lipless crankbait, Bought them at Walmart, usually in a discount box in the bottom because nobody else was buying them. And I caught tons of bass with a plain old Cotton Cordell red lipless crankbait. The key to the lipless crankbait is 
it sinks, so it casts it out. You can let it go all the way to the bottom. You can either rip it back fast, sometimes that works, or you can just slowly work it along the bottom, nice, slow, and easy, because again, the water temps in the 30s, 40s, 50s, the reaction time is real slow. The other thing that I like to do, that I've had success when it's cold, let that thing sink, pick up the rod tip, and let it sink back down slow, and that's when the hits come. Usually up, when they're coming back down, you have to keep close eye because your line is probably not real tight like it should be. And as it's coming back down, that's probably when that hit's going to be. And it's not going to be a real vicious hit because the water temps are cold. But I love to pump it up, let it sink, pump it up, and let it sink. So to me, that's kind of the way I like to run that. Either that or just a nice, slow retrieve, keeping it kind of deep one way or the other. Now, I got one more here. It's a little bit different. I got two that I haven't done much we're going to talk about. And that is this. All right, so what I got here, let me show you a picture up above. As you can see, basically, I've got a hook with a keeper on the front and got a little blade underneath. All right. Then I'm coming back and take real note of that keeper on the front. Notice how it's got the pin that sticks out so you screw the head on of the lure onto that. That's the very, that's the, the better kind of a keeper you want with that point sticking out. Holds them on a little bit better. All right, so here's what we're doing. Coming back here, we fished it with a white paddle tail. Though I gotta admit, we did try a little bit. Uh, uh, I don't know, I just can't even think right now what I'm talking about here, but we've used some of these. The name's there, you, got, you guys know it. Fluke, there we go. Gosh, I'll tell you what, some days, hey, it's pain to get old, guys. Anyway, we fished it with a paddle tail, usually white. This has got a little flake in it. Here's, now this will work all year, but this is way we were hitting them hard this spring. And I think Bob, one of the, the better bass he caught this spring was with this. Basically, we're gonna, with the blade, we're gonna get the, the spinning with the blade, we're gonna get the deal. But because we're fishing it weedless, unlike a spinner bait or uh, a chatter bait, we can let this sink all the way down and we can roll this really slow. We can pump it just like I did this. I can pump this. I can pick it up, let it fall, let that blade wiggle, let that tail, and hit them on the downside with a, with a drop on that. But the key is you can fish it. You can get the blade effect that you're gonna get with the willow blade, you're gonna get that from your spinner bait but you're gonna do it weedless so you can get right down in there and just roll it really slow. Because again, cold water temps, the reaction is gonna be slow. This works great in that respect. We caught fish on this later in the season. Don't get me wrong, it, it can be used all season, but it was a killer early in the spring last year. And I can't wait to get the ice off, get back and try this again this year. All right, couple things that I haven't done much with and I'm gonna do it this year. One, an underspin. An underspin should work real well, in my opinion. Turn around, whatever, gonna let that fluke again. Remember the name this time, rough bad, didn't I? You can put the fluke on it if you want. You can come back, put that paddle tail on. You can put about anything on there for your soft plastic tail. And you about got the same thing you have here of course, the difference is this one's going to be weedless. This one's not. Not tend to be weedless on that one. But, you know, I fished this very, I wanted to fish this last year, and I just didn't do it. This year, I'm going to fish this thing. All right, one more. And I tried this once or twice, didn't do much with it. Your umbrella, or Alabama rig, I, know, I guess it depends who you are, what you call it. I bought a couple of these. Now, you're going to see I got five on here and you say, well, wait a minute, my state doesn't allow that. My state allows one or my state allows two. Well, you know what? My state allows two. So these two right here with the heads on them, they have hooks on them. Now, normally if you can see, and you probably won't be able to see really well here, they all come, the wire has a snap and the snap swivel, a snap swivel, and then that's what you hook on to. All right. So that's what I did for these. But these three up here, let me see if I can get one off here. I took that off, and instead, I put on a keeper. The same keeper that was on the nose of this, I put keepers on here, 
and that allows me just to put a paddle tail on. There's no hook, perfectly legal, but now I'm running five, only these two have hooks. And if you'll note, it's the bottom two at the back. These are a little bit shorter, a little bit longer back here. That's the ones you put the hooks in, because let's face it, if they're coming up, they're not coming this way at it, coming this way at it, they're probably going to grab these two before they grab the top ones. I'd love to say I caught a bunch of fish doing this. I haven't. I know they work. I, I tried this once or twice last year, just a little didn't work. This year, I'm going to put more time in using this. I think, again, an early seasoned lure that a guy shouldn't pass up. If you're not trying it, give it a shot once you take one out and give it a try. And there's all kinds of other stuff. But those right there, I think you won't go wrong with a jerkbait. Take a jerkbait, give it a try. Big, little, all kinds. Flipless crankbait, give it a try. I think that'll work. And go find some of these hooks with the wheel blades in the bottom and the weight. I love those, and we really did well with that last year. All right, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. Subscribe to the channel if you would. Hope to see you again real soon.